Hi, my name is David Horn. I am a software product manager for ProSite PC and Protein Deconvolution Software Packages. Today, I'm going to talk about the effect of increasing resolution on confidence in identification of larger proteins, in this case, enolase. The first experiment that we tried to do, as shown right here, is a direct infusion experiment on intact enolase, acquired at three different resolutions, 60,000, 120,000, and 240,000. And what we had found is, as the resolution is increased, the confidence in the identification goes up from 10 to minus 61, this is from our ProSite PC identification result against the enolase sequence, up to 3.5 times 10 to minus 104, which is extremely confident at 240,000 resolution. The reason why the uh, result got that much more confident can be shown in this figure right here, is only at 240,000 resolution, these two signals for two different fragment ions, could they be separated? And there was one very specific peak right there, where the isotope separated into two peaks, and then we could detect both of those fragment ions, improving sequence coverage and confidence even more. Then next, what we tried to do is take that same uh, sample and run it by liquid chromatography tandem mass spectrometry. Um, this is a little bit more challenging uh, type of experiment because you do not have as much time to collect MSMS spectra. And what we were surprised to find, or maybe not quite so surprised to find, was this was supposed to be a single protein enolase, 47 kilodaltons. And from our chromatograms here, from the base peak chromatogram and the total line chromatogram, there was clearly several different species of proteins in the chromatogram. So we took that data set, ran it through the ProSite PC software, and we identified four different proteins, uh, accession numbers, and the target protein enolase was actually identified in nine different forms. So this is actually not that surprising for intact protein samples. Usually these proteins do exist in multiple forms, and if you don't do a top-down type of experiment, you won't actually even know that. So if we did a bottom-up trypsin digestion, we probably would have only thought there was one form of enolase. And this is the advantage of doing top-down. Another thing that we uh, identified in this data set was a protein called superoxide dismutase, a very highly abundant protein. It's not necessarily supposed to be in a sample labeled enolase, but it was there. And one of the powerful features of ProSIPC is a mode called disulfide mode. So when we identified this protein, we found that this cysteine and this cysteine right here were involved in a disulfide bond, changing the mass of the protein by two Daltons. And then all these fragments here, these are Y ions, contain this minus two Dalton modification. So we identified that a disulfide bond was present and we identified that these two cysteines were actually involved in there. And this is a very powerful feature of ProSIPC software that can take into account this biological variability that you get in intact proteins. So on this LCMS run, again, we ran it in three different resolution settings, 60,000, 120,000, and 240,000. And then we ran those data sets through ProSIPC and got some interesting results. So like I said, we found four different protein accession numbers. And also, each of the resolution settings produced a different set of target protein masses that were identified. The 60,000 resolution, we could easily identify this protein that's at 15.7 kilodaltons. But once you get to these target proteins at 47 kilodaltons for enolase 1 and 2, we couldn't identify it because we didn't have sufficient resolution to detect a precursor ion. And that's shown right here. So 60,000, you can't really resolve the isotopes for enolase at all. 120,000, it's a little bit uh, resolved, but 240,000, we're getting baseline resolution for those isotopes. And so as a result, we're able to identify not only the intact form of enolase 1, but also enolase 2. And that was the only resolution setting we could do so. Uh, finally, uh, we modified the instrument acquisition software using a special developer's kit so we could detect uh, data at 480,000 resolution. This is not something that's available for all uh, users all the time, but we can, in special situations, set the instrument up to do this. So we did a direct infusion run, just like we did at the beginning, at 480,000, and got very high confidence data. And yet again, we saw an example where peptide, peptide fragments over here were identified at 480,000 uh, that we wouldn't have been able to otherwise. So we have found three different peptide fragments. They're all very big, a B148, a Y72, and so forth. And you need this high resolution to be able to, to resolve these fragments and to increase your sequence coverage and thus your confidence. So in conclusion, what we think we were able to prove is higher, higher, higher resolution produces higher confidence. Secondly, you should assume that your proteins are maybe not as pure as you think they are. And so doing this top-down type of experiment may surprise you in the kind of things that you find.
Finally, just want to show that ProSci PC software was used to produce all these results. It's, uh, it's not hard work to get these very complex intact protein data sets, but uh, with ProSci PC, we can get these very quickly automated and uh, you know, can demonstrate the power of the OrbitChap Elite system. For more information, please go to thermoscientific.com slash ASMS to see this poster and other posters on high-resolution mass spectrometry. Thank you.